Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to discuss something with you guys that you might not be aware of. This month is actually National Preparedness Month and National Preparedness Month is something that we as nomads might be a little bit more equipped for than you might think. But for all of those people who are watching this video out there, this applies to you. Whether you are on the road in a van like this or if you are in a sticks and bricks home, this is something that you should be thinking about just a little bit. How many times have you seen one of those little packs that's being marketed to you as a preparedness kit? Now I know I've seen a lot of them being in a van. I see them at all sorts of different places from Camping World to Bass Pro Shop and everything in between. But have you ever looked to see what the contents of those actually are? Some of those things might be something that you already have in your unit and that way you don't have to go and purchase an individual kit. And this is what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Preparedness. Why do we need it? What all goes into it? And why is it so important that we talk about it this month? Well, the fact of the matter is, more often than not, we are out in the world to just live in our lives and then disaster can strike. From forest fires, hurricanes, earthquakes, other kinds of inclement weather, or just normal things like the power goes out around and everybody goes into a frenzy. I know I experienced that last year whenever I was in Texas. It was really bad, guys. But one of the things that we can do is prepare ourselves for those situations. And these are things that I would recommend to you, but I am also going to leave a link in the description for the Red Cross and some of their recommendations also. Because again, whether you're in a sticks and bricks or you're in a good old van like Dimples here, these are all things that we can all use. And a lot of them are common things if you're into camping. A lot of them are. A lot of them are. Now, cell phones are great, but what happens when the network goes down or whenever you're out of an area for service? These guys, this is something that you can have with you that will replace this. Now, with these walkie talkies, of course, someone else does have to have the receiver. However, if you have a family, you can purchase these and actually communicate between your family members. Or if you're like me as a nomad, I can pick this up and give one of them to the person that I'm traveling with in my caravan and we could talk back and forth. In fact, even though preparedness typically is thought to be something that is for natural disasters, these actually can be for a lot of other things. For example, if you've watched my channel for very long, you know that while we were in the Pacific Northwest, Riley actually had an accident and was able to convey that to me using one of these. Now, this is super handy, but also you can look into CB radios. CBs are going to, of course, go out to all the bandwidth that the truckers are on. So that's gonna give you a little bit of security on at least being able to get in touch with somebody. I have one, I might be installing it in my van pretty soon, we shall see. But if you're not using one of these or a CB and you are still able to use your cell phone, there's a few other things that you need to do to prepare for worst case scenarios. For example, have two or three additional charging cords just in case something goes wrong because we all know that iPhone makes a great phone but they make really bad cords for some reason. So have a couple of extra cords. Also have a battery bank of some kind that's portable that you can easily take with you around so that it's not weighing you down. We'll get to some other power in a minute, but a portable power station just for your cell phone is a must. Now, I will be leaving, in addition to the link for the Red Cross, some links to some of these items. Many of you have asked me about the Midland X Talker radios, so that will be down there, but so will a couple of other things, just to make it convenient for you if you are building your own pack. So, that being said, let's move on to our next item of preparedness. I love some water. Whew. I love water a little bit too much sometimes. Is that really even a thing though? Well, in worst case scenarios, water is one of those things that quickly becomes a problem. Typically when we're in a van, we can just go to a water fuel station and fill up our jugs, or we can purchase gallons of water. But what happens when we can't do that? That's whenever this product comes in handy. Do you see this? 
Now, I personally have been carrying a Sawyer water filter just like this for quite some time. It kind of just lives in my safety items just in case. It's really good for being able to take water out of a foreign body that you're not as familiar with and put it through the filter and it pulls out all of the bad stuff that could otherwise make you feel kind of bleh. So, I definitely recommend getting one of these because then you can source water from various places, including streams even. So, if the electricity turns off and water can't pump, you still can have water out of somewhat questionable sources and be okay. However, I would, whenever you pick one of these up, research and learn a little bit more about water filtration. Doesn't take very long, guys, just read a few things. But if you want to avoid having to use filtered water altogether, stock up on water. Now this is a little bit harder for us to do in vans because we only have a certain amount of space. This is something that you're going to be better at doing whenever you're in a sticks and bricks and can have a larger reservoir of of items. However, when you're in a van, you still can bring along a considerable amount. Now, the Red Cross does recommend one gallon of water per day in case of an emergency. That way you can have enough to hydrate and keep your body healthy even if you can't get food. So, this is what I recommend. Something like this. This is a food grade plastic that can be used to store your water safely. These are easy to move around and something you can use in van life for just holding your water on a regular basis but also these are about one and a half gallons a piece so as you're being able to kind of navigate around you can have two of these and that's three gallons of water which is good for according to the Red Cross three days worth of water also they do make these in larger sizes of course you can find them at many different stores including Walmart that are in the six and seven gallon sizes a bit harder to move around unlike this one However, keeping a good amount of water, if you know some bad weather's coming, never hurt nobody. I should have left the water for last. <laughs> now I'm cooling off just a little bit instead. But that brings me to my next point cooling off or keeping warm. There are a couple ways that you can do this. Depending on what kind of inclement weather that you're going to be facing, it's important to be able to cover both. Now in a van, typically we have a bed of some kind with blankets and things like that. So it makes it a little bit easier to accommodate for both of these. There's something called a space blanket or a survival blanket, which looks like this mylar balloon, it's shiny and silver. Those will actually trap in your heat and they're very good for if if you're in a pinch and really need to get some warmth into your body. But also, there's something called a cooling blanket, which I personally travel with. Now, a cooling blanket like this actually uses a really cool technology that pulls heat away from your body. Now, is this gonna solve every issue that you have when it comes to heat? No, but you can use this not only while you're in your space, but you can also put this over your body while you're walking around if there's extreme conditions like extreme heat, and it will help take some of that heat away from you. Now, these do come in all shapes sizes and colors so you could get one of these and just have it kind of in your home also as a cooling blanket especially if you're a person who's prone to having hot flashes these are great so this one is the one that I have I have this one in a large size so that I can completely bundle up in it and it really helps especially if you have one circulating fan so that's just something to think about also now something else that they highly recommend that you do is prepare some options for what you will consume food wise and one of the things that I always turn to is something that I have said time and time again on this channel freeze-dried meals now freeze-dried meals are cool because they actually have a shelf life of about 30 years and so my favorite company of course is Mountain House. Mountain House provides military meals and tons of other freeze-dried meals for all sorts of disasters just like the ones that are happening with the hurricanes, the fires, and other things. I know most of the time on my channel we just have them as camping meals but in reality because of their 30-year shelf life you could have one of these guys and it really gets you through a pinch in some bad weather or when you're stuck in one place and it requires very little. In fact most of the Mountain House meals that I've consumed use less than two cups of water to prepare and all you need is a backpacking stove which leads me to my next suggestion 
finding a travel stove that works for you. Now again, I feel like this is where us people in vans have an advantage because we're already preparing for this because we have to be able to cook our food on the road. However, if you're in a sticks and bricks, find a butane or propane stove that works well for you and just stock up on a couple of extra cartridges and leave them in a nice comfortable place. It's not too hot, not too cold, you know, because gas. It doesn't need to be super, super hot or super, super cold. And then it's there for a rainy day. Now there are a few different ones that I have shown on this channel. I have a Coleman stove, for example, that is a one burner that I use in my van to cook all of my meals. But I also have a Primus backpacking stove, which is very nice and takes up a tiny, tiny footprint in my space. This would be great if you're putting together an actual bag because it would fit right in the bag. And you can also get some tiny little pots and pans that go along with it so you don't have to have the most kit set up. Again, this is a super easy step, but I kind of think that van people are already onto this one. So if you're watching this and you aren't in a van, just put a little bit of thought into that one. Now there are dozens of other things that we could talk about, but I'm going to talk about the next one in a pretty simplistic way. We all need some kind of power. If the grid goes down like it did in Texas whenever we had the ice storms, there was absolutely no power coming through for most people. And because of that, it was very hard for them to function and do certain things. And so I would suggest everyone, even if you're in an apartment that's tiny, tiny, or if you're in a van that's little bitty like dimples, get a power station of some kind. Now, power stations come in many shapes, many sizes. I have reviewed numerous ones here on the channel, and I will continue to do so to bring you guys new things that are coming out. However, a power station, whether it is a 240 Jackery, or it is a thousand watt, or it is a 2000 watt, it doesn't matter. You need some kind of power. Now again, guys, this is separate from the tiny little power that I suggested you have for your phone. The portable power for your phone needs to be able to move rapidly with you, but a power station can sit in a static place. Now, if you really do want to do the best that you can do by being able to salvage things in your home refrigerator, I suggest getting a portable refrigerator much like we have here on the channel with our vans, but that's not necessary. The main things that you're going to want to do is make sure that you are safe, you have food and water, and that you have have a way to contact the outside world. Now, also, a few other things that I would definitely recommend that you don't skimp on if you're preparing. A good first aid kit. Now, a first aid kit needs to have some basic necessities in here. And you can see this one right here, which I purchased online, had all of this stuff already inside. I think the only thing that I added were these bandages because I had to replace the ones that were initially in here. Some other things though that I would probably say that I would recommend adding to this would be some like KT tape and then also some duct tape. Duct tape is wonderful in disasters because it can do so many things. And so since there's enough room, why not keep just a small roll of duct tape inside here? Because you need to be able to be safe, but you also need to have things that will help you in a pinch. Now, if you are not looking to purchase one of these prefabbed kits, the things that are included include band-aids of all sizes, rolled gauze, also tweezers, small medical scissors, and smelling salts. All of these things are included in this plus a few other items. So definitely put this on your preparedness list. You need something like this. There's no ifs, ands, or buts on this one. Now there are a few other things that I am contending with putting in my personal adventure vehicle because it would help me be more prepared. For example, a hand cranked radio. That means you don't have to plug it in and you don't have to have power to be able to hear what's going on. This could be extremely helpful because then not only can you hear what's going on on the radio waves, which many of us forget even exist in the world of satellite radio. And this could be very important for weather alerts, but also if something crazy were to happen in our United States, that 
will be where they're doing the most updates overall because when the TV stations go down they'll still have those broadcast bands and waves so a hand crank radio would be a big huge whopping bonus not to mention there are a few things that I already carry in my adventure vehicle which really help me to get on the road and get moving in an effective way however there's a couple things that are still lacking for example gas cans think about it gas cans are so important if you have a home generator just having a couple small gas cans not doing the most not getting so many that it's ridiculous but a couple of gas cans on hand not such a bad idea same thing with a van if i need it to get on down the road it's there now on the same hand though things i do have recovery boards just in case my van gets stuck boosters just in case my battery goes dead and then also a compressor just in case my tires need inflating or deflating depending on what's going on with the world around us so these are all things to kind of put in your mind whenever you're preparing again this is preparedness month so we want to do the most that we can to make sure that we are ready for whatever can happen whether you're in a van or you're in a home it doesn't really matter we all go through the same things now I personally am huge on solar power solar power can be used at your home or on your adventure rig. I use it every single day to power all of my power stations and all the things that I do on my adventures. So I think that it's a great thing to do when it comes to preparedness. You can hook it right into those little power stations, charge them up, and it'll keep you going for quite a while. I know a lot of you guys who live in a home especially don't understand the importance of solar fully because they usually market the massive solar systems to you, but there are smaller solar systems that are portable that you can actually take out and just charge a smaller unit with and that's what we use in van life a lot of times and it's very effective so I'm not saying that you have to go full-on solar but I'm saying you might consider it for preparedness just a little bit. I hope today has been helpful to you guys in learning a little bit more about preparedness and why we need some of the items that we do. Now again, the link to the Red Cross is below. If you do know anyone who has been affected by any of the storms or the fires that have been going on and you would like to contribute to help, they have various areas that you can do so on the Red Cross site. I definitely encourage you to do that because they are the first line of defense to all the people who are affected by the bad stuff that's going on in our country when it comes to weather. So with that said, I am going to close up my adventure vehicle and get on to my next adventure. I am fully prepared for the road and I'm super excited, but at the same time, there's always some places to tweak. And so I'm gonna be considering those. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time and good times can only happen if we are prepared. Till next time guys, bye.